Hello everybody, so today we are looking at um, photosynthesis and we're given five key questions that apply to the photosynthesis in terms of um, the actual equations and the process of photosynthesis. So that's what we're focusing on in this um, mini lesson. So you can see the five main questions there. Let's just get started. The first one there states, provide the formula for photosynthesis. Okay, that's just a formula you need to know off by heart. So, okay. And you can see there, I've made a two seconds, I made a slight mistake with that one there. I should be at 12. Now, we're given our six H2Os plus six CO2s, where we know light is involved in photosynthesis, and it produces a glucose molecule, that's C6H12O6 plus six O2s. Okay, that's our oxygen being given off there. Okay, higher level students, you need to know the formula off by heart. Okay, order level students, you really just need to know the, um, the word equation for it. Okay, so that's the first one there, provide the formula for photosynthesis. And it's worth turning off, okay, because it's the exact opposite to that of respiration. If you think about it there, all you have to do is reverse this arrow here and you have the formula for respiration, the chemical equation for it. Okay, now, second one there says, describe defensive pathway 1 and third one, describe defensive pathway 2. Now, both pathway 1 and pathway 2 are known as the light stage, which is also known as the light dependent stage you'll often see it referred to okay so pathway one and pathway two belong to the light stage and they're actually both kind of similar in a lot of ways um they're just slightly differ in terms of um the electrons so let's get started there pathway one pathway one is known as cyclic um what happens light energizes the one electron which leaves a chlorophyll molecule so you say that exactly as it is light energizes one electron which leaves a chlorophyll molecule. Next, the, ener the energized electron moves from electron acceptor to electron acceptor. Grand. And finally, once it runs out of energy, it returns back to that chlorophyll molecule. Now there is a formula you need to know, and this is the ATP adenine diphosphate plus a phosphate gives us ATP and H2O. Okay, this is a phosphorylation reaction. That energized electron is losing energy. Now that energy goes into making ATP. Okay, you have to know this formula off by heart, guys. Okay, so that's adenine diphosphate plus phosphate and energy gives you ATP. And that's where all the energy is now stored in. ATP when we need it for respiration um, or when plants need it for respiration. Okay, um, so you do need to know it. A ADP is very similar to AD, ATP, I'm getting confused now with the, with the letters, ADP is just lower in energy, that's lower energy than ATP, okay, tri meaning three phosphates, di meaning two phosphates, okay, two plus one gives you the three, okay, pathway two, so, is known as non-cyclic, fairly similar to that of pathway one, okay, um, light energizes electrons, uh, which leave the chlorophyll molecule, this time we're dealing with two electrons. I always think of two for pathway two. Okay. The electrons lose energy from acceptor, electron acceptor to electron acceptor. Grand. Now, this is where they differ. Different electrons go back, go towards the chlorophyll molecule. So those two electrons, they do not return to the chlorophyll molecule. Different electrons go to the chlorophyll molecule. You still get your formula in which ATP is being produced. Okay, nothing changes there. But there is one other formula you need to know. And it's important that we don't overcomplicate these. So this is where we have NADP+. NADP plus is very, very similar to the likes of ADP. Okay? It's a low energy um, carrier. That's all it is. Now, those two electrons from up here, okay, they still have a bit of energy left. And they go in and they react with NADP+. Plus. Now, that's not all that's there. There's also these things called protons, H+. Pluses. Now, where do the protons come from? The NADP plus is just in the chlorophyll. Okay, that's where it's found. It's found in the chlorophyll. Okay, but the protons here, they're not found there um, at all. Okay, so there is another um, part to it, and we call it photolysis. Lysis means splitting. Photo meaning light. Okay, so it's the splitting of water using light energy. So what actually happens there is, and you don't need to know this definition or this formula off by heart or anything like that. Okay, if you just knew the, the water breaks down to produce your protons, electrons, and oxygen. The oxygen goes off into the atmosphere 
or it's used in respiration or whatever. Okay, but the protons, that's, this is where the protons are coming from, over here. Okay, so that's really, really important. They go to this thing called a proton pool, and then the H plus is plucked out of that pool and used in this reaction to form your NADH. NADH is the key molecule here used to help make um used to help make glucose. Okay, this is pathway two now. So to recap pathway two, non-stickly, light energizes two electrons, they leave the chlorophyll molecule. Electron lose energy from electron acceptor to electron acceptor. Different electrons go to the chlorophyll, okay? Whereas these two electrons, they react with NADP plus and H plus to produce NADPH. The H plus comes from the water molecule or compound um, over here, okay? Um, and oxygen is also coming from the, um, the splitting of water. Okay, so you'll see back up here at the top over here, the oxygen gas is produced, okay? This is why it's been produced due to photolysis. Now, the next question. State the fate of the three products of the light stage. So starting off, we have let me just see. Oh, one other thing there actually. Um NADP plus just to say that's found in the chloroplast, the chlorophyll, I said that already. The two electrons come from the um pathway two, we said that. The pro the H plus comes from the protons, but if you're asked for the compound where H plus comes from, you must say H2O, water, okay? And then NADPH goes to the dark stage. Okay, let's get back to it. Now, ATP, what does it do? It supplies energy for the dark stage and also respiration, but mainly for the, um, for the in respect to the dark stage, it supplies energy for us. NADPH, it provides protons and energized electrons for the dark stage. That's what it does. Okay, provides protons and electrons for the dark stage. And oxygen gas, well, that's used in respiration or leaves the plant into the atmosphere. And it leaves through the, um, the stomata. Our final question is, what is actually happening in the dark stage? Okay, so it's often known or referred to as a lice independent stage. Carbon dioxide from the air okay, enters the chloroplast. The carbon in the CO2 combines with the protons and electrons in NADPH to form glucose. You must write it down as I have it there. Okay, carbon dioxide enters the chloroplast. The carbon from CO2 combines with the, car uh, with the protons and the electrons in NADPH to form glucose. You must be as precise as possible for these. And AT ATP, as we said already, helps to just provide that energy for the reaction between the, um, the carbon dioxide and the uh, NADPH. So look, that's it for this one here, guys. Um, if we continue on, there are some additional questions that could be asked, which I have here. And we'll quickly go through them. So give two main uses of glucose. Look, it's used in respiration, provides for food for animals. It also converts to starch, okay, which also can go into the food for animals um, category. Name three conditions to increase the rate of photosynthesis. This one gets students get um, incorrect all the time. Light intensity, CO2 concentration, and temperature. They'll students tend to write down light, carbon dioxide, and temperature. However, if you're a higher level student, you must write down light intensity, CO2 concentration, and temperature. You must reference enzyme optimum or optimum activity or something along something like those lines. Okay, higher level students, if you write down light, CO2 and temperature, you may not get the marks. I'd be expecting you guys to be writing down light intensity, CO2 concentration and temperature just to reference those enzymes. What happens to ADP and ATP plus? They get um, returned to the light stage, that's all. And finally, what is NADP? So it stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. And what does it do? All it does is it accepts electrons and carries protons to form NADPH in the dark stage. There could be a plus there if you want it, it doesn't matter, okay, um, for this question. So nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate accepts electrons and carries protons to form your NADPH for the dark stage. 
Okay guys, look, I hope that helped in answering some of the questions that you often get asked in um, higher level um, biology for photosynthesis. Um, and I'll be doing one on respiration shortly. All the best now.